we are getting close to real-time spoken conversations with AI. If you were trying to build a system like this, you might come up with something like a model that turns speech into text, and then a model to process the text, and then a third model to turn the text into speech. This is similar to putting together models like Lego blocks, and it's called cascading models. But there are advantages to end-to-end -to -end models, so models that do all of these steps without using text as an intermediate representation. My name is Bai, I'm a machine learning engineer and a PhD in natural language processing. And in this video, I will explain the architecture of end-to-end -end speech LLMs. First of all, what is the problem with cascading models? Well, there are three main problems. The first problem is loss of information when going from speech to text. A lot of useful information about tone and emotion is lost when going from speech to text. That's why we normally do important conversations in person, or at least with a phone call, and not with a text. The second problem, which is kind of similar to the first, is that errors in one of the earlier models tend to get propagated onto the later models. So imagine you're in a noisy room and someone says, I like beaches, or it might have been I like peaches, but you're not really sure because there's some noise. In a cascading setup, the first speech recognition model has to pick one or the other, and if it picks the wrong one, then the later model can get really confused. The downstream model doesn't know which words were recognized incorrectly, so it's difficult for it to correct for mistakes made by earlier models. The third problem is latency. So it takes a while for the first model to generate its output, and then only when the whole output is finished, then it's fed into the second model. And this is going to feel a lot slower than a model that can process a speech and do everything end-to-end -end at the same time. The three components of a speech LLM are the speech encoder, the large language model, and the vocoder. You can think of the speech encoder as similar to speech-to-text, and the vocoder as similar to text-to-speech. But instead of passing around English words and sentences, all the information is represented in vectors that are passed in to each of the models. The vocoder here is sometimes missing in certain speech LLM papers. Um, it's only needed if the output is speech. But if the output is text, then the vocoder can be dropped. So this is an overview before I go into each of the components in more detail. Before we continue, let me share something I've been working on. VoiceWriter is a tool to help you write faster using voice. Simply speak your thoughts, and the AI will fix your grammar and add punctuation in real time. It uses advanced speech recognition models, and I use it every day to write things much faster, including my emails and my daily stand-up updates. You can also use our Chrome extension to use VoiceWriter on any website. Try it for free at voicewriter.io. Now back to the video. The speech encoder is sometimes called a speech foundation model, and this model transforms a speech input into a sequence of vectors. These vectors mainly contain two types of information. It contains semantic information that captures the meaning and content of the speech, and it also contains acoustic information that captures more the speaker's voice quality and intonation. A combination of both types of information is contained in the vectors that's output by the speech encoder. A popular choice for the speech encoder is the OpenAI Whisper model. This is an encoder-decoder transformer-based model that was trained for automated speech recognition. If you haven't seen the Whisper model, check out my video here, where I explain the architecture of the Whisper model in a lot of detail, and also how to fine-tune this model. In the context of speech LLMs, though, we actually don't care about the decoder part of this model. We're more interested in the encoder, and we just use it to generate a sequence of embeddings. It turns out that these embeddings that are trained for speech recognition is reasonably good representation of the speech signal. Other popular options for the speech encoder include Hubert, Wave2Vec 2.0, and Wave2Vec Boot. These models have a different architecture from Whisper, since they are self-supervised and do not have a decoder at all. But for the purposes of this video, this difference in architecture is not too important, because you can just think of them as models that generate a sequence of speech vectors. The next component is a text-based LLM, or large language model. This is a component that contains the knowledge and reasoning capabilities. These models still operate primarily on text, because most human knowledge is still in books and articles, which is text-based. 
There are no models with advanced reasoning capabilities that are trained with speech data alone. The first thing that happens in a text-based LLM is a string of text is converted into a sequence of embeddings, and it goes through a bunch of transformer layers to produce the output. In the case of speech LLMs, these embeddings are replaced with the output of a speech encoder, such as the OpenAI Whisper model. At the same time, a prompt may be added to tell the model what it should do with this audio, like summarize this audio. And since both of these parts produce a sequence of vectors, they can simply be concatenated and fed into the model. A popular choice for the large language model is the Lama series of models from Meta. These models come in various sizes from 3 billion to 70 billion parameters and are open source and are free to use. Some popular alternatives include the Mistral models, Vicuna, Quinn, among many others. However, proprietary LLMs like OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropic Cloud, and Google's Gemini cannot be used for speech LLMs because the code and weights are not available and we are limited to what we can do through the API, although all of these models may provide speech capabilities in the future. If you made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel to feed the algorithm, and check out my other videos on speech and language processing as well. One issue with using speech instead of text as input is that the length of the input sequence tends to become a lot longer. Let's say for one minute of speech, at a typical speaking rate would be around 150 words, and assuming one word is one token, this would result in 150 input vectors. Speech, on the other hand, contains more information. If we're using the OpenAI Whisper model, for example, this model produces 40 frames per second, which equates to 2,400 input vectors for one minute of speech. Transformer models require quadratically more memory usage as the sequence length gets longer, so having such a long input sequence is not ideal. Therefore, it is recommended to have some kind of length adaptation layer, so a layer that compresses the output of the speech encoder into a shorter sequence that is easier for the LLM to work with. This can be done in several different ways, such as using a downsampling conf1d layer, adding a CDC layer, or simply by averaging consecutive frames. Putting everything together in one picture, the speech input first goes through the speech foundation model, or the speech encoder. The length adapter is the thing that we just talked about, and it converts a sequence of speech vectors into a shorter sequence. The modality adapter converts speech vectors into an input for the LLM. This piece is optional and is often just a single feedforward layer. Finally, a prompt is concatenated with a sequence, together to produce the input for the LLM. And then we run the LLM generation procedure normally to produce the output. The last and final piece of the architecture is the vocoder. This is basically a model that converts sequences of vectors into audio waveforms that sound natural. These waveforms are typically between 48,000 and 96,000 samples per second. It is not possible for transformer models to generate these audio samples directly because they are too long. That's why a vocoder model is needed to convert shorter sequences of vectors into audio waveforms. Vocoder models are typically trained with adversarial and discriminator models to sound natural. A few popular vocoders right now include Encodec, Hi-Fi GAN, and Tacotron. Check out my video here about the Encodec model and how it uses residual vector quantization to generate high-quality audio. The vocoder model is the last part of a speech LLM. When a language model is used with a vocoder, the text generation component is removed. Instead of generating text, the hidden layers of the last decoder blocks are passed into the vocoder to generate audio. The length and modality adapters may be used here, but in reverse to produce vectors of the appropriate length. In the final part of this video, we will look at two specific speech LLMs that are very different from each other. The first is Lama Omni. This paper combines several different open source models together to create a speech LLM. The second is Gemini by Google DeepMind, which is a large language model that supports different modality. It can handle audio and also image and video as well. Here is the architecture for the Lama Omni model. And this model builds an end-to-end -end speech LLM with several different open source components that are trained separately. They use the Hi-Fi GAN model for the vocoder, the Lama model for the LLM, and Whisper Large for the speech encoder. This paper also proposed some simultaneous generation and streaming techniques 
to reduce the latency, which I'll not be covering in this video. These three models were trained separately, so there's no reason we would expect the output from one model to be understood as input by another model. Therefore, it needs to be trained end-to-end -end for it to work. The most straightforward way to obtain data for training is to start with an instruction fine-tuning dataset, like the Stanford Alpaca dataset. This is a dataset used to train LLMs that consists of many input and output pairs, where the input is a question and the output is an example of what the model is supposed to generate. Starting from a dataset like this, we can synthesize speech samples corresponding to the input and output using a text-to-speech system. These speech samples can then be used to train Lama Omni end-to-end. -end. All of the components are already pre-trained, so it is only necessary to fine-tune the model to make them fit together. Optionally, parameter-efficient fine-tuning techniques like LoRa may be used here to fine-tune large language models more efficiently. Fine-tuning this model is relatively inexpensive, requiring about 4 GPUs and 3 days of compute. Another example of a speech LLM is the Gemini models. Many technical details about these models have not been made public, but what is known is that different modalities, such as audio, images, and video, are turned into a unified stream of tokens. The model is pre-trained on all these types of data and can generate images and text, but at the moment it cannot generate audio. The Gemini models use something called USM for the speech encoder. USM stands for Universal Speech Model. The model is pre-trained on text, audio, and visual tokens that are combined into the same sequence. Pre-training on mixed data like this likely offers better integration between modalities than putting together different models during fine-tuning. There is no vocoder in this model because it cannot generate audio. It is not publicly known exactly how much compute and resources have been used to train these models, but it's most likely on the orders of tens of thousands of GPUs. This means it is not possible for open source communities or academics to train this sort of model and it is only accessible to large tech companies like OpenAI or Meta. Right now is an exciting time to be in the field of speech LLMs. I am sure we'll see more of these models in the future, because there are so many possibilities of combining modalities to do interesting things. That's it for this video. If you haven't already done so, please like this video and subscribe to support my channel, and click the bell icon to see more videos like this in the future. That's it, goodbye.